Hello, my name is Michael Crane. I'm Managing Director of Crownfield Colours. We're a manufacturer of artist paints and printmaking inks, and I'm here in the Jackson studio to consider the characteristics and attributes of all manner of printmaking inks. I'd like to take a moment to say a brief word about the major printmaking processes. The first is relief. And with relief printmaking, we take a plate and we carve away everything that we don't want to print. And that may be in a sheet of lino or in wood. And the area that we have is relief. That's where the word comes from. So we print the remaining image in relief. The next process is etching. This is an intaglio process. And here we take a flat plate, commonly a metal, copper or zinc, and we gouge out the bits that we're then going to fill with ink and they become our image area. And the third printmaking process is lithography. And there we take a very flat stone, it's called a planographic printmaking process, and that becomes our plate. We apply a greasy crayon to the stone. So the three printmaking processes, relief, etching, and lithography. The others are subsets. So for example, letterpress is a subset of relief printing. But still, those major categories remain relief, etching, and lithography. So what are the differences between relief, etching, and lithographic inks? Well, essentially, whilst they're cousins of one another and they contain the same beautiful linseed oil, which is the foundation block of all of Crownfield products, whether they're Caligo, Safe Wash, or traditional, the difference is in the rheology. Rheology may sound like high science, but it's not. It's very much applied science. You'll know it from the kitchen, if you like. Rheology is simply the science of how things flow. And there are two elements to it. The first is viscosity, which is the reluctance to flow. And the second is tack, which is stickiness. I can illustrate it from the kitchen. If you were to go to the fridge and you took out a slab of cold butter and we put it on a plate, it's not flowing anywhere, so we'd say it has high viscosity. And yet if I run my finger over the top of the slab of butter, there's no resistance, there's no stickiness there, so we'd say it's low tack. If we went to another cupboard in the kitchen and took out a jar of maple syrup and took the cap off, we'd find that it flowed out very easily, so it's low viscosity. But if I stick my finger in the top, it's extremely sticky, very high tack. And it's the differences in these two attributes, if you like, that define the characteristics of each of the inks. Let's start with etching. What do we need from an etching ink? We need a nice strong ink, plenty of pigment, but we need it to behave in a particular way. When we take our plate and we force the ink into each of these lines that we've etched into the plate, we need it to go in easily but we don't want it to wipe out too easily. When we take our tarlatan or our cloth and we clean the plate surface, we want to leave ink in our etched area. So for etching, the tack, the stickiness, is very important. When we're printing by relief, well, we need the ink to roll easily. And with any roller, we're concerned that the ink doesn't fly or mist. It shouldn't be so loose that we leave a spray of ink everywhere. It needs to have relatively high body, high tack and high viscosity. But it needs to behave in such a way that when we put it under pressure, the ink doesn't shoot sideways. It needs to be cohesive and of high, strong viscosity. And then what about lithography? Well, lithography, well, the, the rheology is important, but it's also important that it doesn't emulsify too easily. So whilst these inks are similar, they're not the same and it's the rheology which marks them apart. We've talked a little bit then about the different requirements that the printmaking disciplines have of their inks, but an obvious question remains. Could I not simply use an oil paint for my printmaking? Well, the answer's no, but I suspect you'll want a more fulsome explanation than that. And I'm going to do so by demonstrating on a bit of glass with this piece of paper that I've placed underneath it. When you're printmaking, the transparency of the ink is important because 
the very process, especially if one's producing a multicolour print, relies upon the transparency of each ink layer. We call it a subtractive process. Each coloured layer will be placed over another and the combined effect of the three or four layers of ink gives us our finished result. Now, the same is not true for a paint. For a paint is applied not by three or four microns, but 15, 20, perhaps even into the millimetres. Painters actually want to have both opacity and structure. A painter will want to have peaks. They'll want to have brush marks in their uh, painting. In fact, if they don't want brush marks, they actually will add a medium to make that possible. So oil paints want structure, they want valleys and mountain tops. Inks require a paint, uh, an ink rather, which will roll out smoothly. It's so important, in fact, that if we were to use an oil paint for any process in printmaking, especially those that require a roller, we'd find the product would fly or mist, leaving a, a splatter of ink across the image area. So the long-winded answer is no, you should not use an oil paint for printmaking. Let's spend a few moments thinking particularly about the Caligo ranges. These are produced by Cranfield and the Caligo range is available both in relief and in etching. Now they're oil based, based on linseed, but the linseed that we choose has a fault line if you like. It emulsifies in the presence of soap and water. Now the fact that you need both soap and water is an advantage for us because it means that you can continue to damp your paper if you're an etcher without problem. It's just simply at the end of the day you're going to find cleaning up with soap and water so much easier. I'll give you a demonstration in a moment. Now they're oil based, you wash them up with soap and water but in every other respect they behave as their traditional counterparts. For some they may prefer however the wider colour range in the traditional variants of both the relief and the etching range but if you want to stick with Caligo, if you like the environmental advantages that it gives, well, you can visit Jackson's website or give them an email and they'll provide you a colour mixing guide. And that means from the smaller Caligo range you can mix a very large palette of colours. It's extremely easy to use, it's simply done on a parts basis, so two parts of this and three parts of this gives you another colour. So do ask Jackson's for that colour mixing guide. But let me demonstrate now how easy it is to clean up with Caligo. I'm just going to roll some out here on a glass slab and then I'm going to take it over to the sink. And at the sink I'm going to use a, an old paintbrush just to work some soapy water into the uh, ink residue and then I'm going to run it under cold water and with the use of a window cleaning squeegee you'll find how easy it is to clean. Will you follow me? So let's see how we can clean up a Caligo product. We can use uh, a liquid soap which we can put directly onto the plate or utensil. Other people uh, speak highly of uh, an old paintbrush being uh, reused with a bit of soapy water to work the soap into the ink and uh, others have used the very sensible adaptation of a window cleaner, a squeegee, which can be used thus to clean our product off the, the plate or the roller. So we've discovered that Caligo washes up with soap and water. But what of our traditional ranges? Well, do you have to use solvent to clean a traditional etching or a traditional reef or a lithographic ink? Well, no, you don't have to. Quite a few printmakers find that they can clean up perfectly well by using a vegetable oil. You simply take a quantity of oil and work it into the plate and the roller and the utensils and you'll find that you loosen up the ink to such a, an extent that it can be moved away with a rag or newspaper. There is an argument that some put forward that the vegetable oil is inefficient in a way, that it creates a larger volume of a very weak ink 
and so you're sending to landfill quite a few newspapers and several rags. So some suggest that the judicious use of a genuine solvent, carefully kept in the studio, may be preferable for some professionals. But certainly, to answer that essential question, do you have to use solvent for traditional formulations? No, you don't. Now, we're talking about cleaning up, whether it's rollers, plates... It's also important that we care for our hands. We clean up our hands carefully. And a couple of things I'd point out. The first is that we shouldn't really be overly fascinated by the cleanliness of our hands until we're handling paper, until we're taking our final print. Up until that point, a bit of healthy dirt doesn't do any harm. So we don't keep rushing to the sink. And when we do clean our hands, we'd recommend that you don't use very hot water. 150 years ago, people didn't have access to continual hot running water. Today we do, and we take it for granted. And when we do use very hot water, we open the pores of the skin and the colour can go further in, making it much harder to clean our hands. But once we've cleaned our hands in lukewarm water, we then make sure we protect our skin by using a barrier cream. So we care for our plates, we care for our utensils, and we care for our hands. We're going to take a moment now to consider the ways that you might modify an oil-based printmaking ink. Well, the most obvious is you could take an ink and you can simply extend it. Here's a Caligo Safe Wash etching extender. And an extender is simply a colourless ink. And the beauty of it is it'll make the colour weaker, but it won't greatly change the stickiness or the viscosity. So an extender does what it says on the tin, that it extends the uh, ink, reduces the colour strength, gives us a transparent shade, but it still prints as it would. But the next additive is an oil. This is a Caligo oil, safe wash oil. And here we only need to add a small quantity and very quickly we're going to drink, bring the viscosity level down. It won't greatly change the tack but the viscosity can be reduced by a small percentage of Caligo Safe Wash oil. The third additive I want to talk about is the wiping compound. And this, essentially, it's a cousin of Vaseline, and it will reduce the stickiness, the tack. It's particularly helpful in etching, where we want to ease the wiping of the plate when we use this product 4 or 5%, we'll find that the um, ink will very easily clean off the non-imaged areas of an etching plate. But as long as we don't add more than 4 or 5%, it'll leave the ink in the uh, recesses, the intaglio area of the plate. But we need to be careful when we add either the oil or the wiping compound, because there are perils if we add too much. The dangers are demonstrated perhaps best using this little device in front of me. It's called the Wallace Slope. I wonder if the man was called Wallace Slope or it was simply produced by a company called Wallace and it is a slope and this is what it does. We put a small given amount of ink on this very heavy brass roller and we let it roll down a slope. And when we do so, we look at the two footprints that it leaves behind. And we find that if we add too much oil or too much wiping compound, those two footprints are not the same length. And strangely, the first mark, that first stain, will be longer than the second stain. Well, that seems counterintuitive. So what's going on? Well, if we add too much oil, we move away from something called true rolling. True rolling is the ink maker's ideal. And it means that the rheology of the ink is such that when we push the roller across a surface, every revolution of the roller is matched by the distance that it covers. But when we move away from true rolling, it's a bit like stepping on a banana skin. The roller slips. And so actually the roller travels a greater distance, if you like. It spins. And the trouble of spinning rollers are that it spits out ink we get what's known as ink misting or ink fly. So any of the printmaking processes that require a roller, and that's both lithography and relief, 
need to be as close to true rolling as possible so that we don't get that ink misting phenomena. So we add both the oil and the wiping compound with care. Another additive we may want to consider is Printmaker's Wax Dryer. Well, this is a combination both of some waxes uh, to help the uh, ink have a nice slip so it's not going to mark, but also dryers which will encourage the uh, ink to dry more quickly. So these are the products that you can buy, but there are other additives too that come for free. One of them is a bit of heat. Using a heated plate, for example, will allow the ink to soften. And because oil-based inks are thixotropic, that means that when you add a bit of energy, the viscosity goes down, and you stop adding energy, the viscosity goes up again. A heated plate is a very simple way of reducing the viscosity for a while whilst you're printing without adversely affecting the rheology of the ink forever. If you're going to add any medium, it's best to add it to the ink that you intend using today and not to the whole tin because you may find when you print tomorrow the conditions are different. A hot day, for example, will automatically make the viscosity of an ink fall. Other additives include a bit of talc, which will help bring the body, the structure of the ink back up. Talc will increase the viscosity, if you like. It won't change the, the tack, but it'll give us more structure. So you may want to add a bit of talc as well. These are the mediums that you can use to adjust and amend an oil-based printmaking ink. But as I've said before, it's best to keep the quantities we add to a minimum and experiment, first of all, with the ink straight from the tin before you rush to amend it with other products.